I always tell my clients, if you go view property and you like more than one property, submit an offer on every property that you like. You're protected and I'll tell you why. Whenever you're submitting an offer to purchase a property, there's three contingencies that protect you. Number one is your physical inspection contingency. Number two is your appraisal contingency. And number three is your loan contingency. Now I'll break those down a little bit further. The physical inspection contingency is we are writing this offer contingent of us doing research on the title of the property and also doing research on the physical condition of the property itself, right? Walking through a property for five minutes is not going to determine whether or not we buy a half a million, million dollar property, right? We need to investigate. We need to send a professional contractor in there, look at the roof, plumbing, electrical, and really look at that home, look at that home with a magnifying glass to make sure it's in the it's in good condition to move forward with, right? And so if anything comes up during that report or that that inspection, it gives us room to either negotiate with the seller or back out of the transaction if it's too much to take on or if it's all good we, we move forward right so submitting an offer having that physical inspection contingency in place protects you to back out of that offer at any time that you need to back out of the offer so you could always feel comfortable writing the offer with that contingency in place number two I mentioned was the appraisal. The appraisal is huge right now in this market and I'll go into a little bit of detail about it, but the bank that you get your loan from is only going to lend you as much as they think the property's worth. And so how they figure out the value to the property is that they send in an appraiser. The appraiser will look at the property, run comps on the properties that have sold within the neighborhood uh, within a specific time period, and then come up with a number what they believe that home is sold for. I'll use a for example. If my clients write an offer at 800,000 and the bank goes in there and says this property is only worth 780,000, then the bank's only going to lend 780,000 and that means that my buyers have to come in with $20,000 to bridge that gap to to come to the price of the 800,000 that we originally agreed to with the seller. Now, when you have that appraisal in place, and let's just say the appraisal comes in low, you have the ability to essentially back out of the transaction because you feel that because you could have overpaid for that property, right? So if it comes back at 750 and we paid 800, like, oh shoot, we almost paid for, we almost overpaid $50,000 for this property. Now, what you can also do, let's just say you still like the property, um, that gives you the flexibility to renegotiate price with the seller back out of the transaction just like with the physical inspection or move forward if the appraisal comes in at the correct value. So that's another thing that protects you when submitting an offer and that's another reason why I always encourage my clients just submit the offer if you somewhat like the property. We'll do further investigations. If you don't like it, we'll back out. And it's really important, especially in this market, to pursue it right off the bat because that property will probably be gone within seven to ten days off the market. So all you're doing is you're you're um, you're giving your, yourself a shot to get the property in case that you want to pursue it. The last one is the loan contingency. Now, the loan contingency itself is just a contingency saying, "Hey, look." my ability to buy or my commitment to buy this house is going to be completely dependent on my ability to get financing for it. So let's just say we're a week away from closing. We still have our loan contingency in place or my clients have loan contingency in place. If they decide to, or let's just say one of them gets, gets canned from their job, right? So now they can't afford the loan. They can legally back out of that contract um, because that is the contingency that's in place. Or let's just say, you know, uh, someone in the household bought a, a new car and now their loan debt to income ratio uh, goes too high and they no longer can afford the housing payment that they agreed to. You can back out of the transaction without being pursued by the seller. Now, in this market, 
most people are removing the appraisal contingency right off the bat. That's how competitive it is. So they're they're rolling the dice and saying, hey, look, if this home comes in 30,000, 50,000 above, we're gonna bridge it with the cash. And the sellers and selling agent or the listing agents going to look at the finances of the buyer and they're gonna make sure they have that cash in their bank account in case that happens. Now, there are ways to get out of that contract um, if the appraisal comes in too low and you can't bridge that gap, but I'll save that for another video. And not a lot of agents know how to do it, but it's necessary to do it and get a, an offer accepted in this current market. Now, the final thing I'm gonna leave you with, the thing that's keeping you contractually committed to the sellers or the, you know, with the offer that you submit is the earnest money deposit. So when you submit an offer and, and your offer gets accepted, you write an earnest money deposit that gets sent into escrow the day or the day after that you get your, your offer accepted. Essentially, as soon as you get your offer accepted, you send this earnest money deposit in. And it can range, it can range from $5,000 to $30,000, right? And so that money then becomes at risk the moment you start removing those contingencies. Let's just say we remove all three contingencies and you put $10,000 as an earnest money deposit into escrow. That's what keeps you committed to making sure that you're not backing out of that contract um, if an appraisal comes in low or if any other things happen when, when you remove those uh, contingencies. So, and just so you know, that earnest money deposit, it then gets deducted from your down payment. So let's just say you have a $5,000 a $5,000 earnest money deposit and you have a $30,000 down payment that you're doing. You're gonna put in 5,000 into escrow as soon as you open. And then when you're about to close about a week before you're about to close, you're only gonna have to wire in 25,000 into escrow, which will total 30,000 at the end of the escrow. If you have any other questions on how to get an offer accepted, um, how you can strategically position yourself to put yourself in the best position possible to pursue a home, especially in this market, which is takes it to a whole nother level, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to be able to go into more detail about that. Um, and we'll see you soon. Hopefully you reach out.